Hey, what's up you guys again? Anybody that's listening and watching, um, I wanted to show you something. If you didn't watch my last video, uh, check that out. Uh, I kind of went downtown uh, toward North Las Vegas to look at their convention center. And it was pretty interesting because they act like, we're helping the homeless. We care. We're going to give them shelter. They're full of shit. No one would speak to me. It was roped off. Um, upon further investigation, I found some interesting things. Let me show you, okay? So, also, when you check out that video, it's really short. Um, you see that after I'd circled around a few times and got nowhere, was speaking to the guard at the gate, out comes uh, a group of military. So, yeah, does that sound like they're just there to help the homeless? Here's the interesting part, okay? Check this out. I saw this clip um, online. And the doctor that's running this shelter, in air quotes, kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And you'll see why. Okay, my instinct didn't fail me this time. So let me just kind of show you what they said here first. Center are designed as a preemptive medical care facility for right. our region's homeless. This particular site is actually the first of its kind. This kinda doctor. Public. This is a pre-hospital Acute wearing the site. mask First, wrong most of, most of the other field hospitals around the country are actually overflow hospitals from the actual hospital itself tents are separated by patient status to avoid cross contamination yeah, in the right. green tent patients who don't have symptoms but have been exposed to covid-19 in the yellow tent patients who are anyway douchebag there if you didn't catch that, he wasn't even wearing his mask correctly. He'd get more coverage with a fucking bandana. His nose wasn't even covered. The whole thing rubbed me the wrong way. Anyway, let's take a look at what I found on Mr. Dr. Mark Ogrifa, they said. But it wasn't. I had to dig a little to get the correct spelling. It was Ogriofa from Ireland. Let's take a look at who he is and look what I found. Oh, ho, ho, ho. wow. Hey there, Mark. Hey there, working with NASA. What a coincidence. All right, it says he received his medical degree from Dublin, PhD in biomedical engineering. Isn't that interesting? He's currently a chief medical and technology officer pioneering advancements in medical technology, telemedicine, and research. Now, let me show you some more interesting facts on Dr. Mark Douchebag. Check this out, okay? Here, Mark is a principal investigator for Project Casper. That's a whole nother thing. Cardiac adapted sleep parameter record, which was the first Irish experiment to fly on board the space shuttle in the International Space Station. What's up, Mark? You're a douchebag. <laughs> Don't even get me started on NASA. NASA. But here's even more interesting facts about this guy. Okay, he spent three years at Kennedy Space Center as part of aerospace medicine and biomedical research. Interesting. NOAA trained diving medical officer. This is what got me. And was most recently an Aquanaut crew member on NASA's Extreme Environment Missurative Mission Operations. This was called Nemo 21 at the Aquarius Undersea Habitat. All right. Also, it says here. He's currently leading a number of my biomedical technology and telehealth solutions for both the U.S. Veterans Hospital Administration and the Department of Defense. So is this just some random guy like, hey, guys, I'm a doctor. Let's take care of the homeless. Now, what I said about the diving is very interesting. If you don't know what an aquanaut is, check this out. All right, so. An aquanaut is any person who remains underwater, breathing at the ambient pressure for long enough for the co concentration of the inert components of the breathing gas dissolved in the body tissues to reach equilibrium. So basically, it needs to be balanced in a state known as saturation. Usually, this is done in an underwater habitat on the seafloor for a period equal to or greater than 24 continuous hours without returning to the surface. The term is often restricted to scientists and academics, though there were a group of military, Dr. Mark, <clears throat> douche, aquanauts during the Sea Lab program. Commercial divers in similar circumstances are referred to as saturation divers. We can go on and on about that. But uh, let's take a look here again. What I find interesting is if you haven't noticed all this coronavirus bullshit, I've heard people say 
that um, we all know, oh, they need ventilators and their lungs are bad and they get chronic pneumonia. You guys, when you have pneumonia, you're coughing up phlegm. It's literally fluid in the lungs. It makes no sense. Yet these people, their lungs cannot expand. They're not holding their oxygen. Much like deep sea divers who come up without decompression, you know, their lungs have issues. Same thing uh, if you're in high altitude airplanes, 30,000 feet in the air, same thing. That pressure, the barometric, barometric pressure, the air pressure, the oxygen saturation in your lungs, it's all a mess. So if you just look here, there's a little deep sea diver. I'm going to skip to the bottom paragraph here. At a depth of around 100 feet, remember you've had four times the normal pressure pushing down on you at this point, the spongy tissue of the lungs begin to contract, which would leave you with only a small supply of air that was inhaled at the surface. An ancient dive response is then triggered in our body, which constricts the limbs, pushes blood toward the needier heart and brain. The extra blood will expand the blood vessels in the chest, which balance out the pressure. Okay, so... Basically what they're doing, if you look into this Project Nemo that he was involved in, um, this is going to have to go into another video. But the whole Aquanaut, the whole, you know, him working for NASA, a lot of it is experimental to find out how much pressure, okay, the human body can take. How much can we push the body to what limit, to what end can we expand our lungs, I guess, or retain the oxygen that we do have. If something happens to our lungs, how can we correct it? So this could be one big giant coincidence, again, with clearly Dr. Douchey here working for NASA. And let's not forget Navy SEAL, Department of Defense. And in that nice little blip he gives over here, they're just like, oh, Dr. Griefa, is helping us out. Dr. Grifa is such a cool guy and he's just, you know, volunteering and stuff. They don't tell you what he did, what he used to do, and what he's involved in. And again, he was wearing his mask incorrectly. That was my first red flag. So I'll make another video. <laughs> um, there's so much more I found digging into this, you guys. It is insane. There's no way it could be a coincidence. Um, I hope everybody watching this um, is blessed and having a good day and your eyes and ears are open to see the truth of what's really happening beyond the fear factor they constantly push. You need to look into the people who are running the narrative, okay?